is the 4th of December and last night I had my first Christmas party with some friends and because it's getting near to Christmas I thought I'd put some of my Christmas Hawaiian shirts on. Of course it's cheating, I've got loads of padding underneath. I can't go around in a Hawaiian shirt in the depths of winter. The temperature today I think is like 7 degrees centigrade. So what have I got here? You must be wondering what these crazy beech trees are. If you remember a video I did maybe, was it three or four years ago? These were the beech that I got from a tip, a skip. We were at the building site completing the garden at Islington and the builders had thrown maybe about 50 or 60 of these trees, could be even more, into the rubbish skip because they had forgotten to water it and it had all turned around and they thought they were dead. So I asked the manager of the site, can I have these rubbish trees? So he said, take it. They'll save us filling the skip with all these uh, trees. They'll save us the skip charges. So I took only 36 of them. If you can look back on the video, I'll give you the link. You can have a look at that and you can see what we did. They were all in boxes because they were part of a beach hedge. And all of them had turned brown and they were like this high. So we cut them down and this is the result after three or four years. I'm going to look at each of these trees in turn. So we will take each tree to our workstation and we will show you what we've done with it. So let me show you what we did. So after four years, I think it is four years, 2018 that I got it. We cut the top off. These were four foot trees. We cut it down to two foot or 60 centimeters. And you can see where the cut is. That is the cut. Many people write to me and also comment on our YouTube videos how to make taper. I've seen a lot of other people talking about making taper, but it's all right to talk, but it's very hard to show you what actually happens. Now, unlike evergreen trees where you just cut some branches off, keep the remaining branches, while the remaining branches you got an instant bonsai. With deciduous trees and deciduous bonsai, it is not as easy as you think. Usually with a deciduous bonsai demonstration, all you do is get a large piece of material, cut everything off to the bare trunk, leave one shoot to become the taper and that's the end of demonstration. That demonstration won't even take one minute. So people who are deciduous bonsai um, people, they will never get asked to do a demonstration because there's nothing to demonstrate. There is patience to be uh, developed. So this is what has happened after four years. So come close again. This tree was cut off at this junction and we let a new shoot grow which becomes the new leader and the new taper. You can see, talking about taper, how nicely the taper has developed. Thick and then growing thin. But this was allowed to go unchecked. I stopped one of my colleagues working on it because he thought he would be very clever and, you know, start working on it. But he didn't realize that these are all part of long-term YouTube projects. So that taper has been developed. It's allowed to grow tall every year and I cut it back. The more you let it grow, the stronger that shoot grows and the better the taper you will get. So that is the essence of making taper. Now, that is not the end of story. There are many, many uh, miles more to go in creating good bonsai. So if I wanted to make a tall tree, I can cut it off there and then just shape the tree into a conical shape Shape, looking at it from every angle, front, back, and sides. Just a nice conical shape like that. And there you go. Now, because the taper has been created like this, 
This is going to be the obvious front of the tree. There are still too many branches. I know there are lots of branches. I can keep them. But I think I would prefer to take this one off. I can take this one off to create more space. I can always get new branches because the citrus trees develop new branches very easily. So that is the complete tree. But should I not want it to grow too big, there's another option for a taper. If you again come closely, you will see this shoot going up this way. If I don't want to let the tree grow that big, I can cut it off there and make it shorter. I will do that because I've got so many trees, it doesn't matter that I cut that off. I should be doing the bag trick, but I know that it will look okay. So I've made it even shorter, not so tall. So there you go. So there you are. And all we do now is to put it in a bonsai training pot. We have a lot of these plastic bonsai training pots. I think this one should fit. I don't want to keep using too big a pot, so we'll show you what to do. We will probably tidy some of these roots. Again, if you look at it, we always talk about nebari and all that, but nebari simply means the surface roots. So this is a crossing root there. I will get that off. And this is coming this way. That's not very good. So let's get that off. So while you're repotting your trees, this is a very good opportunity when you're repotting to sort the roots out, tidy the roots. You can pull it out completely. What you want are radial roots, not crossing roots. And because we are now into December, it's okay to repot. You must be wondering why I don't wait till early spring. Again, I keep emphasizing that we have the benefit of this greenhouse, unheated greenhouse, where we keep all our trees. Now, this root coming this side doesn't look good. You see, it's not radial, so we'll cut that off. Let the roots go there. I can pull that root out. It's a lot of strength. If you didn't want to cut it out completely, you can always leave it there and that root will rot. And this root is a bit high. Some people like the high roots. And if you like the high roots, leave it. But if you don't like it, I would prefer to cut it off. I don't need the high roots, but you can still see there's such a lot of root in there. This even is a very high root. And uh, I don't think that looks particularly nice. Some people may say it's nice. I'm sure the YouTube comments are going to say, oh, I think it's nice, you shouldn't have cut it off. So, however many people you have watching this video, I think you will get as many comments. So because this is the front, don't forget that you always have to come back to the front. This is the front. Is it visible? I can keep that root to help thicken the trunk there, but eventually that root will go. Try and develop more radial roots rather than crisscrossing roots. Any roots which are going the wrong way, we'll get rid of. Roots develop very quickly, so you don't have to worry. Now this one is going the wrong way, let's get rid of that one as well. So as we say, this is a good opportunity to tidy the roots up. And if you grow it a bit deeper, you get more surface roots coming out. So this is the front of the tree. We'll pot it up and you will see what it looks like. So that is number one tree. Let's look at another one. So let's look at tree number two. Remember I had 36 of these trees, which I rescued, but of the 36, four didn't make it because it may have dried out too much. I think I gave two to a French uh, boy who came to visit the nursery. If he's watching uh, this YouTube video, please respond and talk about it to see what you did with it. I gave it to him free. And because I said I gave it to him free, another of our UK fans came and asked me for free tree so out of the goodness of my heart I gave him another free tree now so all these trees are the same age you see the thickness all about like two three inches in diameter 
Now, every tree is different. I always tell people that bonsai are like human beings. No two human beings are the same. Everyone is different. So although they're all beech trees, they're all going to be different. So this one, I probably didn't cut down to 60 centimeters. They're like 45 centimeters, like maybe 18 inches. And you can see what a beautiful root base there is here. Although this thick root is popping out of the ground, it doesn't look too bad. I'll take it out of the pot in a minute to show you. And some people say, is it better to plant in the ground? But you can plant in the ground, you'll get even faster results. But I like to keep control and keeping control means keeping it in a big flower pot. So this is a pretty hefty flower pot. I dare say it must weigh about 30 kilograms, must do, it's quite it's heavy. Easy. One person cannot lift it easily, maybe more than 30, it's heavy. And while it's been growing for the last four years, you see these little horse chestnut seedlings are coming up, I'll save that. I'll show you when I repot this tree. Now this tree is very interesting. This shoot has grown in the last two years. Look at it, two years and it's as thick as my finger. Two years growth from here to there. I kept repeatedly cutting it. And I did that because there was a choice of several leaders. There was a choice of a leader this side. But if you look at it this side, if I use this as the new leader, this front here doesn't look so good. It is going away. So that is why I said to myself, this is not a good leader to use. So I cut everything off. And then, lo and behold, I got another leader coming from here. So this, with the front having the roots spreading this way, makes this the better front to use. So this is what I've decided. And I will now take off the one that I don't want. You can either cut it off with a silky saw or use one of these giant loppers to cut it off. Hurry! And then, if you want to tidy it up with a branch cutter, you can pare away so that you get a better, smoother taper. You don't have to seal it. Some people ask, do you always have to seal these cuts? You don't. Like all these cuts, they were cut and they were not sealed. You see how it heals nicely. This is only one year callusing. And it gives it a character that is quite, quite different from if you made it completely smooth. See, this was not sealed and it'll rot away and you'll get a hollow there. And all these branches have grown in the last year. Believe you me, deciduous trees are so prolific that you don't have to worry about them uh, producing side shoots. They will produce side shoots left, right and center. Now, because this is going to be the front, this branch is coming this way, I'll probably put a bit of wire and get it out of the way. And get some recycled wire. So what am I going to do? I'll just... This is the beauty of deciduous trees. If they're growing strongly, they produce branches very easily. So you just have to be patient. And this is where Playing the patient game is what you really need in bonsai. Many people are far too impatient. I know you can make an instant tree, but there is a time and a place for <coughs> exercising patience. This is not the final wiring. This is just wiring to create the structure of the tree. So I've got that. So if that's going to be your front, I'll take a one more that set. So the branch is more open and keep the front open, which this clearly is. And while it is growing, always keep taking the tips out. I know you can do it in the spring, but I'm doing it now for the sake of the demonstration. And again, you've got to decide. Obviously, we can't keep the tree going on and on and on. So I could progressively cut it back to see how it looks. Maybe that is too tall. That is too tall. I'll be inclined to take it off there. Let's 
don't forget you keep getting new sheets and new tapers very easily so I'm not fussed about that so that is more the sort of proportion you can get of course in Japan they have the Japanese white beach they don't have our European beach this is Fagus sylvatica now this really I just mentioned something that if I were to let it become a branch is too thick compared to the other branches so in all good conscience I think I should take that off and take that off and let the new grow new taper grow there but I may wait till the spring but that and that should come off and any branches which are too thick I might take off because I can get new branches very easily so that's another nice little tree nice proportion so that is tree number two we've got two more to do don't forget I still have got 32 trees no I gave away four died that makes 30 uh, 32 I gave away two or three so I still have a, maybe about 28 or so left around that number so that's number two done let's get another one you must be wondering why this tree is lying on its side we're trying to get it out of this large plastic pot and usually if it's difficult to get off the roots have gone through the pot into the ground so we have to cut those roots off to make it easier to get out of the pot Many people I notice when they make bonsai, they have this habit of cutting the pot down uh, to the top so that they can see the nimbari and then they throw the pot away. I'm not a believer in doing that because I am a great one for recycling and saving things. If you cut the plastic pot, you're going to ruin the pot. Not only these, these large, I think these are like 60 liter pots. They're quite expensive to buy. If I buy about 500 at a time, I still have to pay like three pound each. If I buy them one at a time, they cost five pound each. So why throw away five pound and pollute the environment with more plastic? So I try to use the plastic pots over and over again. So for that reason, I don't cut the pots in, in, in half. A lot of bonsai people do it and I don't do it because I don't believe that it's sustainable and uh, environmentally friendly. So. This is why I'm trying to save these pots. So we are going to trap it out. And because my cameraman Josh is with me, we'll have to put the camera down while we pull the pot out from the tree. As I've always said, every tree is different. This is yet another different tree. Now this one I cut down quite hard. It's only like a little over 12 inches high. I cut the sloping cut there, you see? sloping cut and fortunately the leader grew from there so most people usually have the tendency to use the leader growing up this way so that you don't see the cut and make the front like this perfectly acceptable if you make this the front a nice formal upright tree and just remove this very thick branch I've always said that if you have thick branches which are not in proportion with the rest of the tree, it may look rather odd. So this is one option. Every tree has several options. By the way, look at this lovely compost. Josh was just pointing out that this is our compost which is just fine sand and bark mixed in, the very fine bark. We don't use peat anymore. Where there are crossing roots, we will cut them off so that you get good nibari. Now this one has got very good surface roots. And the surface roots always play a role in determining the front of the tree. So let's see what the roots have to offer. So look at it, beautiful surface roots coming there. Sometimes if you plant the tree deep enough, it encourages more roots to come from around the trunk. So once you get a lot of roots, you can then have a wider choice or wider options as to which of those roots to develop for making a good nibari or good surface root system. So I'm continuing to prod away. Not many people realize, especially if you're fairly new to bonsai, that the front and the back of the tree 
is not always determined by the disposition of the branches or the way the leader grows. It is very, very often, more often than not, determined by the way the surface roots go into the soil. So in this case, you look at it, the surface roots are very nice on this side, but this side there's hardly any surface root. So this is going to be the preferred front. Look at it, this is a much better front there. Now again, with this tree, this is a rather high root. Many people are afraid to take a decision and they would leave it. But while you're doing the repotting, it is not a good idea to leave that root. That root is ugly. What has happened, it's got distressed here. We may have tried to pull a branch, so that broke. But look at that beautiful feature there. So notice, uh, that's not a disadvantage, but I think that root which is popping up on the surface is not a good look. So we get rid of that. When we get to repotting the tree, we will be able to get rid of that root from the base and don't leave it in the pot. And because there are so many roots here, we have so many options. So that will come out when we repot the tree. All that will come out. So you can imagine why this tree is growing so strongly. The roots are strong. So that's given us a lot of options. I dare say these roots have all developed since we chopped the tree back four years ago. Tidy this up a little more. I'll get around to doing it. I don't want to waste too much time. Okay, now, what did we say? We said that this tree, now this thick branch, I'm not sure I'm going to keep it. Because if you keep it too long, you may get an inverse taper there. Inverse taper comes when you get too many branches or too many thick branches from that spot. So I'm going to take that off. Don't worry, you'll get lots of new branches going very, very quickly and easily. And then I can smooth this with the branch cutter. I don't want to do too much just yet. Now, the point of talking about this tree is that, okay, so many options for the front. This is the obvious front. Move some of these branches this side. Take some of this off to cause less confusion. What I wanted to really show you is that this tree has two possible fronts. Okay, this is the obvious one with that leader coming. So it's a nice formal upright tree. So whoever wants to buy this, this can be the, for, uh, the front, the taper going this way. And then it could probably end up there. And then grow another crown, more fine shoots, which will come in the next year. The other option is to use this as a front. This is also possible as a front. You can also make the tree grow this way, go this way. And let the leader come back this way. So you can probably cut it there if you don't want it to go too tall. Go back there. Can you see, you get that curly shape, not a formal upright tree. So you have a choice of making that the front. 
So because I'm not going to probably keep this tree for too long, someone's bound to buy it, I will keep this tree with this option and tell the prospective buyer that he can make this the front of the tree. So he's got the choice of this as the front or using this as the front. This may end up as a better front because the nevari here is quite nice. All you need to do is develop more roots over here. By the way, if you want to graft roots, you can put a small beech tree at the side, grow the beech tree here like an in arch and like an approach graft, let the roots grow that way. So you'll get more roots growing from this side. So that's a possibility. So there's so many options for this. So that's number three. Let's go on to another one. So this is number four beach. And because the roots are coming out of the pot from the bottom, I'm going to cut it off. Usually when the roots come out like this, it makes it difficult to extract it from the pot. So all you have to do is cut the roots off. Sometimes the roots can be very, very thick and it's quite a job cutting the root. Fortunately, this one is not too bad. Not too bad. So, I think with a bit of a yield, it should come out. There you go. Okay, hold the camera. There you go. So there you are. Another conquer tree. Look at it. Mm -hmm. All these little conkers fall in there. I think the squirrels bury them into the soil and they come out so we won't waste it. Okay, we'll turn the camera off and we'll put it on the turntable. As I've always said, every tree is different. This is yet another different tree. And you see how well the taper has developed. It's cut there and the taper is almost as thick as the original trunk. So this is developed well. And I did mention that these are all one-year branches. I keep cutting the thick branches off so that I have uniform branches all around the tree. So the first thing I do to enable me to see the tree better is always to just cut everything off and make the tree look like a conical shape. And that is the starting point. And then I will take further decisions as I go along. So this one has been cut to about, I think just under two feet or 60 centimeter. I love these long pruners. They do cost a bit, they're over 100 pound each, but very useful tool to have. I need to refine the cut more. I will probably use a silky saw to cut that more flush so that the taper will be more uh, in keeping with the rest of the tree so it doesn't look such a ugly transition. Now what do we do first of all is to determine which is going to be the front and which is going to be the back. Now this is an instance where the roots do not determine the front of the tree because this leader is coming out this way the natural tendency is to make this the front, but I've got an ugly root coming straight out at me. Not only that, the tree is much wider at this point, at this point. So if you were to decide the front of the tree from the root spread, this is a better spread rather than this side where you can't see the cut. So Although conventional wisdom is to make this the front, this root and the spread of the tr trunk at the base precludes this option. I think this is also a nice front like that. You see how nicely the roots spread from here. And then you've got that as the front. So no problem, I can still make that the front. I could still do that. Maybe create more taper by doing that. So there's more patience to be exercised. Let another shoot go from there. And then you get a more gradual taper. Now there's too much there. I think if you leave this, 
I might get inverse taper, so I'm going to take this off. People are normally tempted to keep that, but for the long-term good of the tree, I should take that off. So, let us decide on the front or the back of the tree. So, if I use this as a possible front, you see this is very nice. The front is determined by the spread of the tree. So, again, there's another little oak seedling, conker seedling, and then we're going to tidy this up. And that will be the end of the tree. So we are now going to spend some time taking the soil off. I'm not going to show you that part of the video. All we're going to do is to rake the soil off, like so. We're going to go around. You notice we use lovely compost. Although this is not bonsai compost, this is just a mixture of very fine sand and bark and garden mud. The trees grow perfectly well in this. In fact, I might use the same soil when I put it in a bonsai training pot. So this is what I'm going to do to discover where the roots lie and then save some of these little oak seedlings to make bonsai. There's an oak and a conker tree. And then we will show you what the next stage is from there. This root's going back on itself. We don't want to show you the boring part. Maybe I will show this because this root popping out could be a problem and I'll show you what I decide to do with that root. The only trouble is that what I find boring, not everyone else finds boring. That's what they tell me. So I got to go by what they say. Look at that, this is a <laughs> remnants of the conker seed. And here we have a conker tree. Conker trees make beautiful bonsai. See, that's a conker tree. I can wire it into a nest. But I would cut there. There are enough roots to sustain the tree. So that's a conker tree saved. Now let's see what this root is doing there. True enough. This root is redundant, really, because this root is going down there. So I don't need this one, which is springing up. So I can safely cut this out, get it out of the way. Unfortunately, beech trees don't grow from root cuttings. At least not in my experience. Some people may find that it does grow from a root cutting. If it was a field maple or even a hawthorn, if you take this root and plant it up, you'll get a new tree growing from there. And of course, Chinese elm. Chinese elms are traditionally produced from root cuttings. So this is no good. Getting your hands dirty. Here's my little oak tree. Look at that tap root on that. You know, the shoot is only that high and the tap root is longer than the top. I don't need all that. Take that off. So we've rescued another seedling. Of course, now that we're going to plant it in a smaller pot, the rate of growth is not going to be as vigorous. So we're going to slow the growth of the tree down. So what did we say? This is not the front, this is the back. Again, try to encourage radial roots. Look at the roots there. Okay, this is the preferred front. I still think this is a nicer front because the roots are nicer. So we get this into a bonsai pot, bonsai training pot. So I would say that this tree has done half its bonsai journey. So we're going to do the same with all these trees and we will show you the finished article when we potted them all up.
I thought I'd show you how much root we are uh, going to cut off. But meanwhile, we've scraped a lot of the soil off. And here's the wheelbarrow full of that compost that came out of the flower pots. And this is the state of the roots. I'm going to cut some of these roots off because when you have a tree that has such a lot of root, it is quite safe to take some of them off. But don't go to the extreme and remove half. I would probably take off some of the thicker roots, which hold some of the fine roots, and then leave most of the fine feeder roots, like these thick roots, like that one. That one could be cut off, so some of these thick ones can be cut off. And we're going to leave some soil. I always like to remind you that I've seen in Japan, they wash the roots off completely, especially with satsuki azaleas. I don't like to do that practice because it can be a bit dangerous. If you wash all the soil off and you do it on a warm spring day, it could harm the tree. So I like to always leave a bit of soil. Different people have different ways of doing it, but do the method that works for you. Always do methods that work for you. Different countries, different climates have different conditions. So don't be arrogant and say that I know best and no one else knows anything else. Let's look at some of these trees and I'm going to show you how we're going to deal with some of these. Now on this tree, I'm using a heavy cutter because it's easier than using my felco. So let's cut that one off. And pull that off. I think if it fits the pot, it should be on right here. So much lighter. Before cutting the roots off, this root ball weighed over 100 pounds, 50 kilos. That's a thick root, it'll generate new roots. Let's test it in a pot. So, this was the first one. Perfect, that's perfect. I don't need to do much more to that. Now on this one, this one, this root is coming off. These are quite high roots. If the surface roots are too high, you don't need them. Also very thick roots you don't want. That's a thick root popping up. Get rid of that. Another thick root. Let's see if that fits the pot. This was the one we thought that the best option might still be to use it like that. The other option was to use that. I don't know, that's also very nice Nibari like that. So the root spread, what I'm trying to show you is that very often the root spread determines the front and the back of the tree. More often than not, it's the root spread which determines the front and back. So we could make the tree this way and just change the design. It would still look nice like that. There's an expression that with bonsai, we are actually like programming the tree. We can make it do things that uh, you can design the way it goes. this time. There's still a lot of root.
what we want is a compact root system. There's still a lot of root remaining. Roots which are going vertically down we don't want because should you want to plant this in a shallow container in the future, these roots going vertically will interfere or limit the choice for you of using a shallow bonsai pot. So because we've got such a lot of roots, or the roots, we don't need these deep vertical roots. I love this time of the year because you can do such a lot to the roots. Repotting the trees is an exciting time. So again, let it be remind viewers that I'm doing this now because we have the benefit of this lovely unheated greenhouse where we can protect the trees if you have an unheated greenhouse or even a basement to protect deciduous trees which don't need light, <coughs> you can do it now. But if not, it's best to wait till early February <coughs> in, in the UK. Oh, gosh, what a lot of root we've taken off. Look at that. So we still got a very compact root. Look at the beautiful nibari there. Okay, so we've got that to play with. So that's going to be the front of the tree. I could even put it in a round pot, but plastic training pots, perfectly acceptable. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. So that's number two done. Now this one, What did we say we would use? So this root going like that slanting is very nice. I don't think I need to do anything. This doesn't look too bad. I'll leave that root. So this is more or less there. All I need to do is reduce the root ball a little bit. So I'm showing this process so that you can see how much root I'm cutting off, how much root to cut and how much root to leave. Especially if you're fairly new to bonsai, it's always um, a mystery, you know. And if you don't know, you can be doing the wrong thing. But if in doubt, always be cautious. See again, these vertical roots going downwards. We need to keep those because they were growing in a deep flower pot the roots have gone downwards but then it made the tree strong These are the vertical roots going down, they're quite thick. And if you cut the thick roots off, it will encourage fine roots to grow.
In my experience, the Japanese beech, the Fagus cronata, doesn't grow as strong in Europe. I wish they did because it's a lovely tree, but to get them to grow strong somehow has always eluded me. We have quite a few of those trees, but they're not as vigorous as the native European beech Fagus sylvatica. I've reduced the report quite a bit. There you go. More vertical roots. And as we're planting it in these pots, it should fit comfortably in a pot like that. So that's three done. We've got to do one more. I won't show you that because that's the same principle. So we're going to put these up and show you the finished product as the last bit of the video. I thought I'd talk a little about the roots here because we were teasing the roots to get it in the pot and we're going to cut quite a lot of roots off. So we are faced with several choices. Now this high root doesn't look so good because this root looks very nice going down that way. So because this root really is in the wrong place, I'm going to get rid of it. So let's cut that off. So this is going down there. Now this is really not really a good surface root, but I may keep it. Uh, there's no harm keeping that because we have to smooth all these up. So it grows flush. And then, of course, you must be wondering, what am I going to do with this fellow here? Because that's really an eyesore. That's an absolute eyesore. So, what are we going to do? We've got to decide, one way or the other, whether to get rid of it or not. So, looking at it, if you take a good look, there is a bit of inverse taper. If I cut it off, it could become inverse taper. But this front part is dying, but the back is living. So that could be okay. And I, as I said, we can always insert a rock in there. See, see what happens. If we put a rock, it might work. It would appear as if it's a root over rock. Uh, so that's really cheating. So we can live with that. Let me just keep filming and I'll bring a rock to see. So that is how I would experiment. You know, bring a rock, put it in there. Some may call it cheating, but you know, you do find trees growing like this in nature, in the forest and in the rocky parts. I know in this country, in the Lake District, and all, you often find trees growing like that over rock. So you can try experimenting, find a rock that fits, put it in there. I'm trying to force this rock, something like that. Maybe cut that one off. See if that works. Because it's a pretty drastic decision deciding whether to cut. But because there are two, again another decision. Do I want both of them or not? Probably not. So let's cut that one off. Let get rid of that one. And then there's still some thick roots there. Too many roots.
reduce the root ball even further. So now we have a very compact root system. And as I said, there's still such a lot of root that there's no fear of this tree suffering in any way. And I think if we get rid of it, it could be a problem because that root is still going out there. So it would be a very bad inverse taper. So on balance, I would keep that. Even this tree popping, this root popping out this way is going the wrong way. I can either pin it down like this when I plant it. So that's the choice. You see the surface roots here look very good. Look at that. Still a hard choice to make. I can always cut it off. You see how nicely it goes over here. Can you see? Over here, these roots go down very nicely this way. So there you go. We're going to pot them up and we'll show you one final picture when all four are potted up. So here we are. We are almost finished. And this is Josh. Say hello, Josh. He's helped me today, lifting the trees, pruning the trees, potting the trees. So we've done four trees in two and a quarter hours, including potting them up. So that is the first one. I've left the root because we're going to put a rock. Okay, so we'll, so I'll take my time to find a nice rock to go underneath there. That may not be the final one, but that's the sort of idea. Slightly leaning to one side. So that is that tree. Now this tree again, we've decided to keep the leader coming from the side rather than coming directly at you. So this is the front because it's got a wide spread at the base. So the front was decided on the root. So is this. <coughs> Slightly slanting again. Again, you see the lovely root base. So that's number three. And this is or this again, you could eventually, whoever buys this tree could use this as the front, but because the roots are quite nice spread either way, we decided to keep this as the front. So these are the four we've done. We've done one other tree at the back. So we still got like, as I say, 28 trees. I won't show you them all. So this is what we've done today. And I hope you've enjoyed this follow-up of the video we did four years ago. Thank you.